everybody, and happy Thanksgiving. This is John here with the Life According to Cars YouTube channel. Today we're on our Making Baby series, part three. Today we're talking about the American alligator. How does it reproduce? Did it evolve? Or was it created? Also, we included a spiritual lesson at the end on taking the high road. You'll see why in just a moment. So the American alligator. Before we started talking about this, we talked about the tarantula hawk hornet and the saguaro cactus, both from the American Southwest. And we asked the evolutionists, how did these different organisms evolve? So now we're on to the American Southeast. So the American alligator is native to swamps, lakes, and rivers of the Southeastern United States. So if you're in any of these places right here, they could be in your backyard. During their mating period, alligators are most active during dusk and dawn. A male or bull alligator will make bellowing sounds to attract females and warn other males to keep their distance. So not only are they saying, hey ladies, they're saying, men, keep your distance. Stay out of here. This is my territory. When mate ready males come into contact, the results can be gruesome. During mating season, they can be vicious fighters as they compete to secure available females and territory. They may come away from a battle with missing legs or blinded eyes. In addition to bellows, males will slap the water to send out vibrations to gain female attention. They will also use infrasound to gain attention of fertile females, which are sounds that are lower frequency than humans can detect. So this is such a low frequency, we can't even hear it. Pretty amazing. Alligators also use a scent to attract mates, releasing a pheromonal musk. So essentially, they have this in their back pocket, and they're sitting there spraying it on themselves <laughs> to gain the attention of females. In captivity, large groups often gather for courtship and mating, but it's unknown how this happens in the wild. So they do act a little bit differently in captivity. It's, it's unknown if they even do that in the wild. When alligators find a potential mate, they'll engage in a tactile courtship behavior to start the process of mating. They may rub and press each other's snouts and bodies or push one another underwater. This shows their strength and proves they're superior to other suitors. After successful mating, eggs are usually laid in June into July at the latest. A study in molecular ecology sup uh, provided support for the idea that male alligators successfully mate with more than one female and that females can produce clutches farther by more than one male. April marks the beginning of the mating season in Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. During this time, alligators will begin courtship, resorting in mating during May or June. As reptiles, alligators are o oviparous, oviparous, <laughs> which means that they lay eggs instead of giving live birth as mammals do. So the American Chinese alligators are the only two species of alligators still living today, and both species lay eggs and reproduce sexually. Here's a really amazing photo that I found online here. You can actually see alligator eggs, and you can see one of them's hatching. You see a cute little alligator head poking out of one of them. So cute, isn't it? And then there's the babies right there. So question for the evolutionists. Did the American alligator evolve, and if so, how? Or did God create it? The Bible says, And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Now, here's all the different species of this kind of animal that we see throughout the world. What we have is a caiman, alligator, crocodile, and gavalidi. Darwin looked at this and he thought all of these had a common ancestor. I would agree. I agree that they had a common ancestor, but it looked like one of these animals. He believes that every single one of these animals is related to absolutely every living organism on this planet. And I don't think that's true. I think the Bible's true where it says that they bring forth after their kind, because that's what we see. We've never seen any of these animals produce something other than what they are. 
So today's spiritual lesson, um, something that the alligator does that's really amazing is a high walk. Uh, we've seen them do that, and I figured, okay, they do this really neat high walk thing. So we're going to talk about taking the high road. Now, what do I mean by that? In other words, if somebody wrongs you in your life or there's something where somebody's come after you or you're in an argument or in a fight, take the high road. That may be a slogan that you've heard before. And you hear about that in the Bible a lot, too. So we'll turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 5. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but who shall ever smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other cheek also. What does he mean by that? And this is straight from Jesus, by the way. What he's saying is, if someone were to strike you on the right cheek, that you should turn the other cheek afterwards. Don't fight back. Turn the other cheek. Nobody's ever said anything like that before in history. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him also have thy cloak. And a cloak is a coat with a hood. So he's saying, if they take your coat, give them your cloak also. Amazing. And who shall ever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. And twain is two. So he's saying, if somebody asks you to go a mile, go the extra mile, go two miles. Give him that asketh thee, and from him that borroweth of thee, turn not thou away. What he's saying is, is if somebody's coming to you with need or needs your help, don't turn them away. Help them. Be a good Samaritan. Ye have heard that it hath also been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them which hate you, and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Incredible, powerful words. Nobody has ever spoken this way. Here's the other thing, too. We live in a very divided world. One of those things is by politics, and that's why in the Bible, in Second Chronicles, it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall vote Republican, join the militia, store up survival foods... It doesn't say that, does it? It says, If my people, who which are called by my name, shall vote Democrat, join the pride movement, and silence those we don't agree with. It doesn't say that either. It says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. When was the last time you humbled yourself? When was the last time, no matter who you are, I don't care if you're a father, a mother, a son, a daughter, or whoever you are, when was the last time you humbled yourself before God? When was the last time you said, Lord, I'm sorry that I did this. I know that I shouldn't have done that. Maybe it's just a friend of yours. Maybe you did something wrong. When was the last time you looked at your friend and say, hey, I'm sorry I did that. I shouldn't have done that. I was wrong. I'm sorry. When was the last time you looked to your wife or wife looked to your husband and said, honey, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. I, I did this the other day. We were in an argument and we said this and said this. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have done that. It's a freeing thing to decide to humble yourself. Make the choice today. Humble yourself this Thanksgiving. He says, and to pray and to seek my face and to turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and I will heal their land. He's waiting for us. A lot of people are concerned about the direction that America's headed in and the entire Western world is headed in. God will heal it. He's waiting for us to turn to him though. This is what he's waiting for us to do. Humble ourselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear their call from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Do that today. I encourage you. It's a freeing thing, and he will not forsake you. I know today's video was short, but uh, today's Thanksgiving, so I've been invited uh, by a family to join them for Thanksgiving out here in North Carolina. The rest of my family's back in Arizona. We did a FaceTime call earlier today. Um, but I'm going to go get me a delicious meal, and then uh, tomorrow we'll be back to work at Samaritan's Purse. I appreciate you all watching. I hope this was a lesson that resonated with you and uh, helped you out. Uh, if you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior yet, uh, it's not too late. It doesn't matter who you are. He's for the entire world. It doesn't matter how many sins you've committed. He will still forgive them. However, that is not an excuse to continue. 
You need to allow him into your life to change your heart and to change your life. If you have questions on that, please feel free to leave a comment. If you're an evolutionist and you have a great explanation and are very well studied and into it as to why I'm wrong and why you're right, please leave it in the comments section below. Until next time, folks, have a blessed weekend, and I will see you next week. Take care.